No, that is, today it is very clear. In fact, not now. I mean, it was very clear by the 1970s that taking the Kashmir issue to the UN Security Council was a fundamental error because, we, you know, you are taking it to a court where the judge, judges are all stacked against you. That these were Western countries who had a bias towards Pakistan. And actually, if he had been hard-headed, if we had a good sense of international politics at that stage, we would not have taken that call. It was done, you know, as, a, as actually a misreading of what the world was about. That somewhere we saw, you know, UN, it's a, uh, there's a sanctity about UN, these chaps will be uh, impartial and, uh, uh, you know, uh, neutral arbiters. In fact, we were, uh, you know, taken for a ride by a set of countries who had that geopolitical agenda, who used Kashmir as an issue of vulnerability for us, and they continued to use it till at the, you know, it took us decades to finally take the call on Article 370. I mean, to me, Article 370 was not just a call within the country which we had to take, it actually has profound foreign policy implications. We have closed today a window of vulnerability which we were foolish enough to open in 1948. Sir, while you make references to uh, the past and discuss our, uh, the roads that we could have taken but we did not take, you also make very insightful observations about the present and the future. And one of that is regarding the, uh, the narrative battles that we need to fight in today's uh, digital media age and also uh, the challenge that comes uh, in a theater, uh, in a conflict uh, 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 zone or a uh, uh, war theater uh, where multinational companies